Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this video series, we're revisiting the ISS to Station 5 transfer. So this, uh, the, the challenge of this mission is the huge 63 something, 61, 63 degree uh, plane change between the two stations. So we've attempted this before, and in the previous attempt, we raised our orbit way out into space, 100,000 kilometers, and we timed it so that when we arrived at that point, we would be at a node, and then we did a big plane change burn, came back down, and rendezvoused with the Station 5. That was interesting, but uh, we looked at some other plans before we ever started that mission, and one of the other ideas that we had for that mission was lowering our, um, our altitude down into the atmosphere and using the dynamic pressure to steer ourselves in the plane with the Station 5. And that's the approach that we're taking on this attempt and that's going pretty well so let's go ahead and jump back into the mission and continue on so let me switch camera views here get inside the xr2 and we're going to unpause and continue on so in the previous video we completed a sixth pass through the atmosphere because we still had a relative inclination of 4.61 degrees and unless i completely bungled something on the math I found that it would probably be uh, as cheap or close to it just to come back down to the atmosphere for one final pass. So that's what we did. Currently we're climbing back out and we still have uh, 2,000 seconds until we're going to be at Apoapsis. So with that in mind, um, let's go ahead, well let me do one thing here. I can see that my rate is positive and even though we're high up enough that it probably doesn't matter. I'm just going to rotate a little bit way that's the wrong way I think I want to be rotated that way and you know honestly it doesn't even matter we're so high up at this point but whenever I see the rate positive it's it's always in the back of my mind that <clears throat> you know I could be getting uh, some small effect all right let's bring up burn time calculator and so with DV plus RCS, we are at 6,633, 6,633. And we have 0 0.53 on the uh, relative inclination. So 6,633. 6 so let me insert a line here and let's copy this, paste it down and let's update this line. So this was a sixth pass, this was our last pass. So DV remaining afterwards was 6,633, and the relative inclination came all the way down to 0 0.53. All right, so let me fix the gain really quick. So minus mm, 0 0.53, so our gain for that pass was 4.08 degrees, bringing our total up to... 65.78 that seems obviously wrong somehow but I'll have to review that later and figure out what's wrong there okay so now we want to subtract out the 6033 and we also have to add in the previous line so minus C 65 okay so that pass was 255 meters per second and we got a gain of 4.08 so I feel like that was worth it because we saw that even if we raised our orbit out to 19 by 19, which which would incur cost, it would cost 558. So, you know, there there, it's it's there's probably there might be other things that could have made it worth doing something else. But this is what we did. So currently we have 6,633 delta v remaining. So, and our plane change has effectively been nulled out. So let's kind of just do a quick comparison on where this plan stands in comparison to the other ones. Because <clears throat> I'm curious. So again, plan one was a non-starter, so forget that. So with, um, you know, with plan number two, where would we be? Uh, it's hard to say. Well, we would still have, I guess it's a little hard to compare them side by side because we're doing different things, but... Maybe plan three or four would be the best one to compare to. So basically after the plane change maneuver, 
um, probably, you know, we and this one would have about 29.58 left. This one would have had about 55, assuming we didn't mess up our plane alignment on the atmospheric break. And in this plan, we have 66.33 remaining. So, I mean, it's pretty good. It's time consuming in terms of real world time, but it's a pretty good plan. So now we have to decide what are we going to do next. So again, this part of the plan I said was a bit up in the air. So let's go ahead and switch camera views here. And let's try to figure out how to, like, what, what is the next thing that we want to do. Well, one thing. <clears throat> <clears throat> one thing I always say in my videos is that once you're in orbit, you want to stay in orbit. So something I notice right away is that my my periapsis is pretty low so one of my very next things i want to make sure i try to take care of is raising my periapsis because we know we're going to have to catch up with the with the station five because we are here it's over there uh, we're going to zip around the earth much faster than it so we at the very least i think something that would make sense to do next would be to raise our orbit so that it's circular. And I don't think there's any reason to not do that. Um, so let's go ahead and make that our next maneuver. <clears throat> and we'll record whatever that costs, although we can figure it out. So actually, uh, let's get close to that point. So we're still 900 seconds away. Let's go ahead and make that the next order of business. So, and let's, let's calculate what that's going to cost us. So 6017, let me actually come up here and before I switch camera views, I'm just going to punch those numbers in. So 60.17 on our PEA, 292.8 on our APA, and we want to basically just circularize our orbit. Okay, so <clears throat> now I'll switch camera views. So that's our PEA currently, that's our APA currently. We're basically just going to circularize our orbit at a cost of 69 meters per second. So let's go ahead and add that into our plan here. Let's insert a line. And I'm just going to say raise PEA after we are done. You know, Atmos, I'm going to say it like this, after we're done surfing the atmosphere. So somewhere in the neighborhood of, um, you know, for us, we know it's going to be 69. Oh, okay, so for us, we know that's going to cost 69 meters per second, but we should be able to, for the most part, we know that that's going to be raising our atmosphere, raising our PEA from something around 75 meters up to, you know, whatever we want it to be. So we've got that cost recorded. All right, now let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and do that maneuver. So let's warp time forward, get closer to the time to the apoapsis. And we'll come out of time warp about here, go into the prograde position, and I'm going to bring up interplanetary MFD, bring up the orbital program, and we'll go ahead and let the circular, uh, circularize do this maneuver for us. Uh, let's go ahead and warp time forward to let that settle, and then we'll turn off prograde. <clears throat> And we're going to perform this burn. So it's a three second burn. So we'll perform the burn when we're about one second, just a little over one second away. So coming up on the burn right now. <clears throat> Okay, so that burn is complete, and let's go ahead and take a look at our delta V. So six five six four. So we went from six six three three to six five six four. So I think that cost pretty much in the neighborhood of what we said it would. All right, now we have to decide how are we going to encounter the the station five. So let's target it again. So we're going to catch up to it really fast because our orbital period is 5-4, its orbital period is 7-6. So we're going to catch up pretty quick. Now we do have this last little bit of relative inclination to deal with. Um, let's, let's, 
use transex and try to set this up so that we can just combine everything into one burn. <clears throat> so let me do an adjustment here to ships plus station five. And I think what I might actually do is do transex and IMFD and try to get the best burn that I can by going back and forth between the two. All right, so let's change our variables to uh, graph projection and give us something that makes sense. There we go. View over to the maneuver, turn maneuver mode on. And we know we're going to raise our orbit. So we'll start with that. And if we're going to be about as efficient as we can, we want to just be touching the orbit of the station five, not going past it. And that to me looks perfect. So now we're going, we're going to change our date and it's not going to be a huge amount, but we'll start with ultra and we're just going to start circling around in time until the closest approach comes down. Uh, bearing in mind that we will have to do some amount of plane change in this maneuver, but it shouldn't be a huge amount. So we're getting really close about here. So let's go down to a hyper setting and oddly, says we are only a kilometer out and that's fine I mean we wouldn't even have to do a plane change to for just gonna be a kilometer out it's a bit surprising and it says the DV is 427 and the encounter velocity is 418 or in <clears throat> in IMFD speak my DV is 427 and my IV my intercept velocity is 418 so that was easy um, let's bring up IMFD and let me see how far out in the future is that. So not far, not super far. Let's bring up IMFD and see if we can match it uh, or rather beat it. <clears throat> so we're going to go to the menu, into the configuration. We're going to turn off nodal aggression because I don't have non-spherical gravity sources enabled. Mission timers MJD that's set in the configuration file. And we're going to go to uh, course program, target intercept and we want to target the station five change our projection to something that's sane and so for starters i feel like a good starting point rather than just guessing with imfd um, since transex is so much faster at finding the solution we can start by using what we found in transex and we know that our eject point is going to be that number so let's start by setting the tej to nine six let's go 20. okay now that's gonna have messed up this because that's has my ti in at a completely different time so this says my uh my encounter so i can start by setting my mjd here five one nine eight five Two, two. We'll start with that. Okay, so since we use transex to get ourselves in a really good, um, in, a, in, a, in not just in the ballpark, but really close with uh, IMFD, now we can use IMFD and focus on our DV to see just how much we can improve the transex plan by. All right, so we are currently unlocked and that's what we want and we're at 1x let's start with 10 that's probably too much but let's just see what happens that's the wrong oh that's better that's better that's better better worse so let's start with that so one and so that's everything's getting better so let's see and that's starting to bottom out so now let's check our ej and let's start with 10 worse worse so we're really close and point that's going worse and that's getting a little bit better but now worse so yeah i feel like i feel like the, maybe the best way to, to use interplanetary mfd is to start with transex because it's so much faster and then just basically import that plan into interplanetary mfd and then fiddle with it from there <coughs> Okay, so just to kind of make sure or you know that we're close, I'm gonna I'm gonna lock this now and I'm just gonna move it forward backwards a little bit just to see what happens. 
Okay, so we're locked. So worse, not surprising. Worse. So yeah, I feel like we. I feel like we're there. So let's go ahead and unlock, and let's just check one more time. So worse. So that's worse. That's worse. Okay, we've got it. I feel like we've got it dialed in. So thank you very much, Transex, for your assistance. We don't need you anymore. Go away. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, plan on burning this maneuver then. So this is going to cost us uh, 429 on the D on the you know to raise our orbit, and then another 420 to raise the other side of our orbit at the time of rendezvous, for a total of around 850. So let's uh, bring over page, bring up the burn vector. And so <clears throat> it's, it may, it may be a bit interesting to note that what uh, IMFD figured out, it was that using 428.66 prograde plus 15.84 degrees of, of plane change plus 0 0.3 degrees of inward or negative outward is, uh, was the best solution. And we could have found that in Transex, but um, IMFD finds that last little bit faster. All right, let me turn off the burn vector for a moment, and let's get closer to the eject time and just watch our numbers. And be a little crazy with time warp. So 6,000, 5,000, 4,000, 3,000, 2, And about 500. Uh, I'm getting scared, so I'm going to come out of time warp now. Now I just want to check everything again, uh, just really quick, back and forth, just to see if anything has changed in the universe in the last few thousand seconds. So we're at 1. So that's not helping. That's not helping. That's not helping. And that's not helping, so I feel like we found the best solution possible. <clears throat> All right, let's page over, bring up the burn vector, turn on auto burn, and uh, let's get a bit closer to the time to burn, and then we'll help out the autopilot. Okay, we're coming out. We're not too far away from 180, so we're in rotation. So let's go ahead and start rotating towards the direction that the burn needs to be in. And we're pretty much there, so I'm going to kill rotate, and we need to go just a little bit in this direction, wrong way. A little bit right there, so that has us lined up perfectly. Probably won't hold perfect, but it's really close. Now we're just going to warp time forward over to 180, and we're already lined up, so the autopilot didn't have to do anything. And now we're going to uh, <clears throat> warp time forward and complete this burn. So we're going to do the burn in just about six seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and burning. And what we can do here, we can come over to Transex, turn off the maneuver mode so we can see what our actual closest approach will be. So 23 meters, not bad. All right, let's bring up burn time calculator and let's log this burn into the record books so we have 6135 remaining so let me switch to this view and well what we actually did we went from current altitude to 2000 <clears throat> and that cost us uh, well we had remaining remaining 6,135, so, so what did that actually cost us? Let me think about this. Um, well, actually, I know because uh, we have it here in Burn Time Calculator, so that actually cost us 429.14, 429.14. So let me log that, 4... 2914 that's actual cost okay so that is going to wrap it up for this video let me switch camera views here 
And when we come back in the next part, I imagine it will be the last part. We will rendezvous with the Station 5 after all of our hard work, and we'll dock. So I will see you in the next part.